So why is it that we want to integrate functions? What is this really useful for? Oh, it's useful for lots of things. Reverse engineering from rates of change is used all over the place. Let's look at a few examples. We'll begin with some basic mechanics, the kind that you learn in an elementary physics course. Consider acceleration. Let's assume that you've got a body that is experiencing a constant acceleration. What are its velocity and position? This is a common setup. Let's assume, as is the case for a ball that you throw in the air, that the acceleration is a constant, that it's minus g. g being the gravitational constant and the minus sign out front, meaning that acceleration pulls down towards the ground. Now, since acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, then the way we get velocity is by anti-differentiation, by integrating the acceleration. So the velocity v as a function of time t is the integral of the acceleration, minus g, with respect to t. Now, what function has derivative a constant? Of course, it's just that constant times t. So the velocity is minus g times t, aha, don't forget the constant, plus c. That constant is very important. Let's think about this. If we consider what happens when time is zero, when we first start out, plug in t equals zero, that first term goes away, we're left with the constant. We might therefore rightly call that constant v naught, the initial condition on the velocity. So your velocity is going to be a linear function of time, really an affine function of time. That is minus the acceleration constant times t plus the initial velocity. Okay, that's velocity. What about position? Since the velocity is, by definition, the derivative of the position x as a function of time t, then we can extract x from v by integrating. x is the integral of v dt. Now, because integration is a linear operator, we can integrate the velocity one piece at a time. We've got that constant minus g in front of the first term. What function has derivative t? Of course, that's t squared over 2. So the first term in the position, the integral of minus gt is minus 1 half gt squared. That looks familiar. But we have to integrate the next term, the v naught. That's a constant, so its integral is v naught times t. And then, as always, we have to add a plus c. But now we can interpret that plus c as what happens when we plug in t equals zero, we get the initial condition on the position, call it x naught. That is our answer. The position is minus one half gt squared plus v naught t plus x naught. And this is not a surprise. You should have seen this. You should recognize this from when you had some basic physics. You throw a ball up in the air and it traces out this parabolic path. Now recall, if you will, in the last volume, we looked at position, acceleration, velocity, all that from a Taylor series perspective, thinking about the Taylor expansion of the position function and extracting the velocity and acceleration from the first and second order terms. Now we're doing this backwards. We're starting with the hypothesis that the acceleration is a constant and then anti-differentiating to build out the velocity and the position. Okay, so much for mechanics. Let's turn to another example, to economics, where one is often working with marginal data, with information about a function at the margin. How do you go from the marginal to the principal? You anti-differentiate. So for example, if we're in a situation where we know something about the marginal revenue, let's say marginal revenue is a linear function of time. What does the total revenue look like? Saying that the marginal revenue is a linear function of time means that dr dt, the derivative of the revenue with respect to time, is a linear function, that is some constant times t. 
to get the total revenue, we anti-differentiate. We integrate. What is the integral of a constant times t? You know that. That is one half that constant t squared. This means that when we integrate, the total revenue is going to grow quadratically. Did I forget the constant? I kind of forgot the constant, but the asymptotics don't change. Linear marginal revenue leads to quadratic total revenue. Okay, how about a different example? Let's say that we're working with some other marginal data. I don't know, marginal sales. Let's say that that is a sinusoidal function of time. How does the total sales behave? If we know that the marginal sales is sinusoidal, that means that ds dt, the derivative of sales with respect to time, is a sinusoidal function. So let's call that a times sine of t, where that a is a constant representing the amplitude. What function has derivative sine, uh, let's see, um, minus cosine, minus cosine. So when we integrate, we're going to get a times minus cosine of t plus some constant. It's maybe worth thinking about the graph of this to see what is happening. We've got the derivative being the sinusoidal function, and then the total sales having this constant, let's say it's positive, and then we've got minus a times cosine of t. What does this mean? What this really means is that if the derivative is sinusoidal, then the total, the antiderivative, is also going to be time periodic with the same period. It's going to have the same amplitude, the way that we've set things up. But the interesting thing is there's a shift. There's a lag in the response of the total sales to the marginal sales. And that lag time is exactly one quarter of a period. The same way that the sine and the cosine functions are the same shape, just shifted by a quarter period. Now, none of these results that we're talking about are really deep yet. These are very, very simple examples of anti-differentiation. We're going to turn soon to some more serious examples of the application of the integral.